Hello and welcome to part 6 of my operating system development tutorial. Today we'll be learning how to build a GCC cross compiler so that we can start writing our code in C instead of only assembly. There are a few things that we need to download to get started. Bin utils, GCC and if you're on Windows you need to download SIGWIN. The links to those will be in the description. I'm on Windows at the moment so I will start by installing SIGWIN. Select install from internet. I like to keep it in the standard directory and local package directory just default. I like to keep everything default, just let it run its course. Choose the first mirror, if that doesn't work, choose another one. Now we have a list of things that we need to download while installing SIGWIN. Those are on the screen now. We will be building a 64-bit version, so make sure that anything that has an option between 32 and 64-bit, like MinGW, be sure to choose x86-64. Now that SIGWIN is installed, we need to put the bin utils and the GCC files into SIGWIN64, the directory that you installed SIGWIN to, home, your username, and then into source. So we'll put those into the source directory. Now there is a few commands that we need to run, and those should be on screen now. Now that we've entered those commands, we need to go into our path environment variables and enter these three entries. This will point to your new compiled binaries and the DLLs will need to run them. Now to see if that's worked properly, we can go into command prompt and type x86-64 ELF GCC. And here we go, it's found our compiler. Fatal error, no input files. We'll do the same with our linker, just by writing LD, no input files. So it's working correctly for both of these inputs. There is actually probably one thing we should also do. The LD that we compiled, the linker that we have, is the same as the LD that comes shipped with SIGWIN. So in order to use our own, we're going to have to rename it. So we'll go home, user, opt, cross, x86, 64, elf, bin, and our LD, we'll name this to custom LD. So we'll be using this one specifically instead of the other LD. Now we can get onto writing some C code. So we'll add a new item, We'll call it kernel.cpp. Now let's make a simple function. We'll call it void underscore start. Return. Now in order to link to this from our assembly code, we're going to need to declare this as extern C. I don't know why it can't link to C++ code, but it links to C code perfectly fine. The next thing we need to do is go into extended program and remove our origin because our link is going to do that for us and we need to declare extern start and now we can do jump start or rather call start so now we'll get to here we're declaring external so that our linker knows to find this function and put it here and then we'll enter this code here now we need to move on to changing our compiler options so that we can compile it with our new C code so this is what we had last time to compile our new CPP and link it properly, we're going to need to do a few things. We need to change this to the ELF64 format and change this to something else just so that we know it's not a binary. And then x86-64 ELF GCC to use our compiler. Free standing M no red zone M64. Now we can give it our kernel.cpp file and our output can be kernel.o. Now we can link our extended program and our kernel.cpp together. Custom LD to use the one that we just created. Output kernel.temp for a temporary file. Capital T text and then our origin. So 7E00, the same as what we were using before. Extended program.o and kernel. O. So that'll link extended program and kernel.o and output it into kernel.temp. Now we can object copy the values of kernel.temp into kernel.bin. So our output is binary, capital O by the way, very important, kernel.temp into kernel.bin. Now we need to change extended program.bin to kernel.bin. Right, now let's see if this works. There we go, so we've 
made our assembly, we've compiled our C code, we've linked it, we've copied it, and we have our new kernel code. Now if we run it, we should have nothing changed because we haven't actually added any new code. Now, just to validate that we are actually running this C code, let's do something special. Let's make a int pointer to B8000, which is our video memory address. And then we can do something like this. And we'll see what that does. As you can see, it's put PP onto our screen and has changed the color formatting because we are setting the bytes in the video memory to this value. Now we have successfully made our GCC cross compiler and used it to compile some C code. Yay! That will be it for this video. Maybe in the next video we'll be doing something a little bit more useful. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.